I mean, I saw King of the Air first in 2000 in Maui, and that was the first time I really saw kiteboarding and done it at an extreme level, and I was watching all of the guys go crazy and do insane tricks, and I was like, this, this seems really cool. And then I started kiting a year later and competed in Maui and always, you know, I was like 12 and 13 when I was competing there. So I was still, I made it into the event and I was excited about it, but still pretty far down the ranks. And um, then when it came back here in Cape Town, I just knew, I was like, this is the reason I got into kiteboarding. This is what I want to do with my life. And I want to be the Red Bull King of the Air. Your 2020 Red Bull King of the Air It's, uh, it was a pretty special event and a pretty special year. I mean, I've always had different plans going into the King of the Air, and I won it in 2013, and since then I've kind of been chasing after the win, and I've come really, really close many times. I've been in the top five every year I've competed, and I got second twice. And this year, changing my strategy up a little bit, not, almost not caring as much, realizing that if I come in winning or losing, the day is going to be awesome, it's going to be beautiful. I have an incredible sponsor to work with, incredible trips to go on, and an amazing family here supporting me, so it doesn't really matter if I win or lose. And that gave me the confidence to give everything I have on the water and not get overtaken by stress or by anxiety in any way. So I was pretty relaxed throughout the day and it ended up being the winning strategy. In the final we have three Red Bull King of the Air winners. We have Jesse Richmond, we have Nick Jacobson and we have Aaron Hadlow. What a way to end it. Well, seeing the Orbitz debut in the King of the Air last year was, everyone was pretty excited and pretty curious what was going to happen. And with Nick and me making it to the semifinals and then, you know, getting the, having the Orbit put me on the podium last year, I feel like was, was pretty exciting and a little bit of a shock for everyone. And then this year, between Mark's highest jump of the event, Nick's highest score of the event, and my win, I think this kite is starting to really create a place in the sport as the ultimate big air kite. It just really becomes one with you in the sense that I know exactly what the kite's gonna do. It's extremely predictable even when the wind is totally crazy and having that connection to my kite is an absolute must, especially when I need to trust so much in it because we put ourselves in positions where if something goes wrong, there are pretty intense consequences. So you need to really rely on your kite and that's only formed through you know, many hours of, of having that kite catch you and having that trust build. And I've gotten to the point now with the Orbit that it's, it's the kite I want, it's a kite I need in these situations to be able to really give it 100%. There goes Jesse. It's the first handle pass of the finals. I rode the, the Focus in this event, and I've been riding the Focus throughout the year because I really like the little bit of extra rocker that board has. The Atmos is an incredible big air board, and that's what the majority of the other riders were using. But I go with the Focus because it has that little bit extra rocker and really helps, um, especially when I'm coming down hard, which is something that I tend to do. So having that little bit extra kick helps absorb the landing a little bit better and having the flex in that board really helps explode on the takeoffs. So it's, it, is, it does come down to a preference thing, but the way that the Focus rides for me is pretty incredible. To me, the Focus is kind of the, the ultimate board that I could ask for, especially in this event. Normally I'll ride a 136, but in this event I ride a 133 because we're so overpowered. So being able to have that rocker and have that smaller board really helps control the, the extreme amounts of power. And it still gives me a very stable base to come down and land on. During King of the Air, we need an incredible amount of hold on our boards and having that super close, tight, and perfect connection between us and the board is essential. 
with the flex straps, it really has made a massive difference because for me, I've found that you can really have the strap fit to the contours of your foot. So you can fine tune and adjust the strap to be fit perfectly. And especially when you're doing maneuvers like kite loop board offs, where you need to be able to take the board off and then put it back on and have it be locked on there to land. Having a strap that fits perfectly to your foot almost feels like you ha it has a spot. So as soon as I get my foot in and I get it to that certain place in the strap, I know it's locked on. And then another aspect that's really been cool is how it, it has a slim profile, but what they've done is they've inserted a triple density foam. So there's three different levels of foam with the bottom being the hardest. So even when you're coming down super hot on some of these kite loops, you still never end up bottoming out the strap and kind of injuring your heel, which has been a thing of the past. So these straps have been pretty incredible to ride and definitely become an essential part of the quiver.